Our Father, on this day, as we keep the special memory of our Redeemer's entry into Jerusalem, we beseech thee that now and ever he may triumph in our hearts, just as he rode in triumph into the city of Jerusalem, into the city of his fathers. Lord, let the light of grace and glory enter in and let us lay ourselves at his feet in homage before him as this in the name and through the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. On this most special day of all, there's just something about it that is different from other days. You can feel the difference. It's not just one other time, not just another time to come into the house of the Lord and worship our King and our Redeemer. Yeah. But this day, even if we don't say it, uh -huh. there's, there's just something about it. I think it is the fact that the Lord God Almighty is present with us, right. has been present with us, right. and will continue to be not only on a day such as this, not only leading up to Easter, Resurrection Sunday, but all the days in between. Yeah. So right now, let us go into the Word and begin with this service of Palm Sunday. On this first day of Holy Week, it's that period when we as Christians the world over, remember, and commemorate the final events in the earthly life of our Lord Jesus Christ. You and I and all Christian believers, followers, lover of our Lord, regard this as the most solemn week of the year. Yeah. It is a week of prayer, a week of preparation, a week of almsgiving, through special services, that is, that we render to others, almsgiving. Holy Week comes as the last week of Lent, just before Resurrection Sunday, that is, beginning with Sunday and ending with the Lord's Day. This day, Palm Sunday, honors Christ's triumphal entry yes. into Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Now, when he entered into Jerusalem on that particular day, we know how he came in. The pastor has reminded us that he did not ride in on a great white charger right. as was the usual way. He did not enter with all of the booty which he had conquered from other persons. He didn't ride in with a retinue behind him of all the slaves which he had gathered from those whom the soldiers had brought. No. How did he enter? Uh, humbly. Right. Humbly. A king entering humbly. Yeah. And to further assure that we understand his humility, he entered on a donkey. A donkey. Not a great white charger, but a donkey. Yeah. And I think he's one of the lowest considered animals on the pole. But this is how he came in. He came in riding into Jerusalem, knowing what was going to happen to him. It was no surprise. He had known from the beginning, because we hear our Lord, our God saying, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus came to die. Mm -hmm. We see him there in, in Bethlehem at his birth. And there he was, the King of kings, Lord of lords. Yeah. He lay there in the manger. And they did not care that God's own son was lying there. Mm. But from Bethlehem, he came through. Yeah. 42 generations 
When the time had come, Jesus was born. Not until. Because you see, in the interim, after his birth, there were several world empires yeah. that followed. That's right. We have Persian, the Babylonian first, yeah. then the Persian, then the Greece, and then Rome. Mm -hmm. And this is when Jesus came. This is when God decided to send his son during the empire of Rome. That's right. Now, we know that during that particular time, the favored way of getting rid of the criminals and robbers <clears throat> was to crucify them. God knew this when he sent Jesus. He knew what kind of death he would die. He knew exactly what would take place and how they would kill his son. Now, this was done because earlier, we read, God prepared a body for him. You see the significance of that? Yeah. He had to have a body because God can't die. God is a spirit. But Jesus, the Son of God, came, the incarnation, with a body prepared for him so that he could die, That's right. shed his blood there on the cross of Calvary. And then shedding his blood, we know that is the only way that our sins will ever be forgiven or remitted and for our redemption. So through the shedding of his blood, we have redemption. We have propitiation. We have forgiveness. Mm -hmm. We have peace. Yeah. We have cleansing from sin. Mm -hmm. And all of this only through what? The shed blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If he had just gone there and listened to those who sat down, yeah. we read, they sat and watched him. That's the crowd. They sat down and watched him there. Now, we can kind of think about after the Hosannas, now in our day, there were those who in the South and perhaps other areas also, where it is the accepted system of the government, where many times there were those who were hung from a tree, not necessarily nailed to it, hung on a tree. And we know there, tradition says that they went and they sat down and they watched it. People came from miles around on such occasions to sit and watch, bring their lunch. And I've heard that this is where the term picnic comes from. They brought their children, everybody, come sit down. And just as they did here in this government, That's right. they did back there, Take right back there. Yeah. They sat and watched. There were those in the crowd who just wanted to be entertained. Yeah. So they sat down there and probably folded their arms and said, let the show begin while they're sitting there. Here is a man, human being, being crucified. But not only just crucified, but for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of the whole world. He was without sin. Yeah. All right. he, had, he had not sinned yeah. at all. He came and he said, let us make man in our image. But that did not include Sin. He was without sin. Uh -huh. So here we are watching it. Well, <coughs> the government, not only then and now, but many times, makes it possible that we do things that we know we should not do, but we do them anyhow. Mercy. We find that during that week, what was the problem? During that week of the Hosannas, the crowds followed him 
Many in the crowds came because of the miracles, uh -huh. because of the food, the feedings they got, and all of these earthly material things. That's why they followed him and shouted, Hosanna. They also wanted, as the children reminded us, that Hosanna means save. No. Uh -huh. They wanted Rome to go ahead and allow them to uh, live because Rome had their foot on their necks. Yeah. Rome held them down. Yeah. Rome had soldiers in that group yeah, and right. in that crowd. It was not just plain old everyday. Included were the soldiers. That's right. And as the soldiers sat there, they played games. That's right. There they were gambling, playing childish games, right. while our Lord is dying mm -hmm. in agony for you and for me. As well, the Hosannas brought about people who just had nothing else to do. Yeah. So I'll just go here and I'll be there. So we hear them crying, Hosanna. Yeah. Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Well, our Lord set his face like a flint and rode into Jerusalem knowing what was ahead for him. His disciples and those who loved him said, Lord, why are you going there? Why are you doing this? And each time, at least three times, he told them, it's not yet my time. See, Satan had tried to get rid of the Lord God before. Right. There in the wilderness, he tried with the temptations, three of them, turn these stones into bread, if you are. Now, when you see that word, if, in the Bible, many times you change it in your mind and say, since. Because God Almighty, the Lord Jesus, had the power to change those stones into bread. So instead of Satan saying, if you can. See, he's tempting him. He's trying him. He's trying to get under his skin, saying, if you can do this, yeah. instead of since you can do this. Then that didn't work. He tried another way. He said, come and look over all of these empires, all of the lands, all of the kingdoms of this world. And Satan said, I'll give you these. You can bypass the cross and you can be ruler of all of these lands, yeah. all these kingdoms of the world if you just bow down and worship me. Jesus knew that was a temptation. That's right. And then once again, he said, jump off this pinnacle, this high area, jump off this. Because you know, we read there that he will give his angels charge over you. So what is, you see, Satan is the adversary. He has always been the adversary. He wanted to have the same position of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in heaven. So from that time on, he has still been the adversary. And any way he can, he seeks to unseat our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. But he can't do that. The crowd said, come down off the cross and save yourself and save us. He didn't do it. For if he had come down from that cross, yeah. you and I would still be lost. That's right. He had to stay. He, didn't, he could have come down from the cross. Yeah. He could have called 10,000 angels 10, to come and destroy this world and all of those who were adversaries. But did he do it? No. no. He stayed on the cross. He was obedient to the Father. The Father's plan of salvation. Right, the plan of salvation was for you, Jesus, my son, to die, to shed your blood, your innocent blood, so that people will not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. So Jesus, the God-man, did not call 10,000 angels. Right. He did not come down from the cross to save himself. He stayed there. He was sent on a mission by God the Father, and that was for him to 
die. He stayed there until that time. And now after the Hosannas, after we have listened and after we have praised him, after we have seen him ride into Jerusalem the way he did, all we can say is ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. Ride into our hearts today. Ride into our world today. Ride into this nation today. Ride into the government today. You see, we're trying to get rid of him still after the Hosannas. We've kicked him out of the schools. We make all kinds of changes and laws that he has given us in his word to follow. But our government says, well, we'll vote on this, that, and the other. And once we vote on it, that's going to be the law, and we'll change it. Not so. They will answer for that right. at that latter day time. Here we are after the Hosannas. And the Gospels agree that the local, the political authorities, the local religious authorities, all of these are the ones who plotted Jesus' death. Mainly why? They were jealous of him. The religious leaders, the political leaders, saw all of those people following after Jesus now and knowing that if they continued to follow him, they would be losing their support. So they were what? Jealous of him, envious of it. So we've got to get rid of this man, Jesus. We're going to get rid of him. Now, we might have to plot it and plan it and might take a little time, but we'll get rid of him if we have to do what? Kill him? If we have to bury him? Whatever we have to do, because we're going to get rid of him. Yeah. We've been trying all of these centuries, and we just cannot fail at this. So after the Hosannas, here we are in the face of popularity, popularity of the citizenry, Jesus, with the rank and file of the citizens, they now yell louder and louder, Hosanna. But now we come to that dark day of Good Friday. After the Hosannas, you too, even now, by the time we get there, we know what is going to take place. It's no secret. It's no longer a mystery. Yeah. It is all done. During these hours, the multitude of the fit of the cross had unsurpassed opportunity for salvation. There they are with yeah. Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, the Savior. Remember they said, the angel said, name him what? Jesus, because he will do what? Save his people. Amen. The name Jesus is Savior. Name him that. There they were with a golden opportunity, the golden opportunity of a lifetime. But they let that opportunity slip past. Right. They did not take a part of that opportunity and become saved. This was their moment. They continued to make nothing of that great opportunity. Amen. What else about those people who sat there? Others were interested in just seeing the show. We mentioned that. Others spent time in play, but when they did all of this, they lost their opportunity for redemption. For we know that the shedding of blood yeah. is necessary for the redemption of mankind and its sins. And we read there in Leviticus, the life of the flesh is in the blood. I repeat that. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Yes, this is why Jesus Christ hung there on that cross. Uh -huh. You can't kill God. Mm -hmm. God's a spirit anyhow. So God prepared for his son, for our redemption, a body. And while that body was being crucified, while the blood was being shed from his body, they used to sing a song that said, have you, did you hear that hammer ringing? I haven't heard that song. It's been way, 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 way. I won't add all the other ways to it. But they used to sing, can't you hear that hammer 
ringing. When was that hammer ringing? When they were crucifying your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When they were nailing him to the tree. That's one thing we don't see. We don't hear it anymore. Have we forgotten the great price that he paid for us? Let us never forget that. We don't know how many people would be included in that group among us today. That is those who sat down and watched him after that. Yeah. We know that they represent and include every individual everywhere. That's right. The kingdom of God is an everlasting kingdom yeah. and its dominion endures throughout all generations. So just as he rode there into Jerusalem on that last day, triumphantly, we repeat, ride on, King Jesus. On. No man can hinder you. Yeah. So we want him to continue. So with the cry of Hosanna. And as we say now, it is now A.D. 2023. Many, many, many centuries have passed. But if we notice, much is still the same. In this brief career of the man from Galilee, now the most crazy, this was most important days. It's not the Hosanna so much that we remember. It is not that, but it is the love that was represented by our Lord and Savior there on the cross. We recall how he revealed it was this fleeting, transitory time that he was here. Not very long. That crowd did not stay very long. And before they knew it, they had changed it from Hosanna to crucify him. Yeah. They were willing, able, looking forward to it. And it did not take much time for them to change and say, crucify him. That's right. We cannot view Palm Sunday any other day in Jesus' life, apart from the drama that unfolded in those hours yeah. between Hosanna right. and crucify right. him. The efforts of the authorities to trick Jesus was one way in trying to get him to condemn himself. We hear Caiaphas say, Pilate say, you say you're a king? Well, see, that was the wrong thing to say when you got Caesar. Don't come into this area claiming to be a king. There's only one king. And Caesar says, I am that king. I don't want to have any opposition whatsoever. So therefore, he asked him, are you a king? Are you a king? Okay. After the Hosannas, after all the agony that he went into, that he experienced for us, for your sake, and for my sake on trial. We have not only the fact that they did not have enough backbone yeah. to go ahead and follow Jesus as they had begun, but they allowed the government to change your mind from Hosanna and praise to crucify him. Yeah. Now, no longer were they friendly. The sign that Pilate put up on his cross said, the king of the Jews. Yeah. And they said it in three languages. It was said in Greek. Mm -hmm. Greek was the language of culture of the day. It said it in Latin. Latin was the language of the powerful of okay. that day. And they said it also in the language of the Hebrews they were the religious people of that day. All right. So all those who passed along that way where Jesus was crucified in a public place so everyone would see and know what Pilate actually did was to compliment Jesus by saying he is the king of the Jews and by writing the sign in the languages of three of the powerful nations, not only then, but today, after the Hosannas as well. He did this without purpose, not intent, because we have the fact that Jesus was the king. Jesus is the king. He's the king of our minds. Yeah. He's the king of our hearts. Yeah. 
and we find out that he is a king of all life. All of man belongs to Jesus. His kingdom is made up of believers and followers and those three areas of mankind. He wants to be the king of the whole man. Have you heard that song that our four parents used to sing? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Yeah. Yes, we were there. Perhaps not in bodily form yet, but those who represent us were there. We were all there. They crucified my Savior and nailed him to a tree. Then they also sang, as we said earlier, don't you hear the hammer ringing? Amen. As that hammer rung, nature responded. The rocks broke open yeah. as that hammer rung. Yeah. Not only did the rocks broke break open, but the earth itself quaked. Yes. The earthquake was a powerful one because nature, God's creation, heard that hammer ringing. Yeah. And this is how they responded. And we know that the veil in the temple was rent from top to bottom, not from bottom up where man could have had some part in it, but from top down, yeah. knowing that now you and I, we don't have to go to a priest to reach our Lord and Savior Jesus right. Christ. Right. We can go directly to him and pray to him, ask for whatever we want to ask, as long as it is in his will. So therefore we have that veil. But beyond that, we know that when that hammer rung, yeah. the sun refused to shine. There was darkness, as we know, over that period of time. So can you imagine, we ourselves didn't have to necessarily say anything because all nature spoke for us on his behalf at that time. Yeah. But one witness which is unusual, maybe not unusual, but surprising. But this witness was a Roman soldier, okay. the one who crucified him. Yeah. Rome, you know, didn't allow anybody else to do the crucifixion. They did that themselves. That's why the others did not uh, kill Jesus. Only Rome could do that. And therefore, we see that when he spoke up, centurion, that means he was a leader of over 600 men. And they crucified people all the time. It was not something special to have Jesus hung on the cross. Yeah. That was his job. Rome employed him for crucifixion. He crucified people all the time. Okay. Nothing strange for him. But what did he say after our Lord and Savior was hung on the cross and crucified? Surely. This was the Son of God. Because all of those other people that they crucified, nothing happened like that. The sun didn't refuse to shine. The earth didn't quake. The rocks didn't rent. Yeah. None of those things. So therefore, he could say, one who had experienced crucifixion as a regular routine, when he says, surely this was the Son of God, why can we not accept it and know it? He wants us to believe on him and be his followers. But it's kind of hard sometimes for doing this, for seeing him. He expressed a truth which we proclaim today. Many of us, especially those seated here, we proclaim that fact today, yeah. that surely this was the Son of God. Right. Hebrews 10, 5 reads, wherefore, when he comes into the world in the fullness of time, he said, sacrifice and offering thou would not, but a body hast thou prepared yeah. for me. Prepared by his Father, right. our Father, God, the one who lives and reigns forevermore. Therefore, my friends, Almighty God sent his only Son to establish that kingdom. Are you a part of that kingdom today? It is time for you. Don't be like the one who said, not now, I'll put it off, I'll wait for another day. We can't do that. We don't know about what tomorrow is gonna to bring. 
we say what, that uh, that's a canceled check, tomorrow is a promissory note, and we do not have any claim of our own on tomorrow. That's right. So enter into the joys of the kingdom yes. just as you have the opportunity this morning in this house of the Lord, yes. this body of Christ who is headed by Jesus Christ. He right. say, lead us, O God, into this holy week that we may walk with you all the way yes. to Calvary. May we not defeat and desert our Lord and Savior, Christ our King. Let us not deny him. Let us not betray him. Let us not reject him as so many times it has been done. But today, after the Hosannas, after the day of crucifixion, today and always, we cry, ride on, King Jesus, just as you rode into Jerusalem on that day, that triumphant day. Ride on, King ride on. Jesus. Yeah. Be King of kings and Lord of lords. We know you are. Continue to ride on. Yes. We pray that the world will come to Jesus. We pray that you will be a part of that kingdom oh. which our Lord, our God, our Father has invited you to so that you will not perish, right. but have everlasting life. Amen. Hosanna in the highest. Yes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory. Hosanna, Amen. Hosanna. Yes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Ride on, yes. King Jesus, the after these Hosannas. Yes. Amen. Glory. Yes. Praise